the pressures of climate change, pesticide misuse, pathogens and parasites are certainly significant issues facing uh, many bee species. All of that coming to hitting the, the honeybee population all at once is really causing them to experience rapid decline. Today we're facing an epidemic of nature and deficit disorder. We're set to be a world of 10 billion people by 2050. And that puts an enormous strain on our food systems, on our planet, um, and on our communities. It was about 10 years ago, and I was in my studio in Manhattan, and I turned around and I saw this little tiny honeybee in the middle of the rug. And she was moving really slowly, so I had this opportunity to get down on the floor and really study this little bee and hang out with her. And in that time, it took about two and a half hours before she died, and I connected with her. I connected with the beauty of this little creature that I'd never noticed before. And that's really how this whole story began. Dear Mr. Willie, my friends and I like bees a thousand a lot. I saw your bee murals and I heard that your mom was an artist. I am an artist too. I will be a bee scientist and a dancer when I grow up. Would you like to come to my school and paint some bees? My school is in Washington, D.C. and we have fresh honey at school. You can visit my science class. I have brushes and paint. Your bees are beautiful. Love, sun. Matt made Sana feel like she matters. Matt makes all children, all people feel like they matter. The greatest gift you can give to a child is to make them feel like they are counted, that their voice matters, and that they are loved. And the mural reinforces that. I loved the way he started last year by painting one scout bee to tantalize us, you know, and it was like the scout finding the good location, Janney School. So all the kids knew that more were coming, more bees would be coming, right? And so now he's back to paint the rest. The kids are figuring out, I heard them asking, you know, is there gonna be a queen? Which one is the queen? You know, what's that bee doing? Why are they in this arrangement? So they're learning, they're talking, they're sharing. One of the things that the mural offers is a way to really be able to actually see bees. Since bees are always moving, we're really just kind of forming our opinions of them when we're looking at a blur. But the mural brings it out into the community for everyone to actually see how complex and how interesting and the beauty of bees in a way that we can actually see it with our, our own eyes and our own vision and on our own terms. Every single student may not be interested in a unit on pollinators at 210 on Thursday, but if you have something like that there all the time, you know, like after they've had a chance to go outside and run a little bit, and get some fresh air and some oxygen and they're ready to really think and then it's there. That's when they're open to it. We're seeing more and more children indoors, playing on their devices, not being connected to nature in a significant way. And we're really trying as a forest service to build connections between people and pollinators. We've been trying to propel pollinators, but it's really propelling people to connect to pollinators and make it relevant in their lives. And I think art brings a sense of relevancy. And for them to be able to look up at the wall and see the bee, it brings such a vibrant aspect to helping people to connect with nature in a really, really deep way. When you can use art to educate young people about the importance of honeybees and monarch butterflies and the uh, pollinators in general, uh, that starts a conversation in the community. That starts a conversation in, in households around, hey mom, where, did you hear about this honeybee that's, you know, issue that's happening? We are a majority white school in a majority white neighborhood in a city that's very diverse. 
Um, and when I think about the impact that I would like our children to make in the future, it is working across differences. It is recognizing um, the uniqueness and individuality of others. When we were hoping that Matt would come to Jan, I think one of the most intriguing parts of it for me was about how we could use this project to make connections across the city. I'm Davia Walker. I'm principal here at Neville Thomas Elementary School. We have approximately 400 students. Um, coming from the Paradise neighborhood in far northeast D.C. They're a lovely group of kids. The community is really welcoming, um, but it's disadvantaged in a lot of ways. Um, one of the ways is that it's a food desert. Being a food desert, our students have to go more than a mile and a half away just to get to the nearest grocery store and close to a mile away to get to even a fast food restaurant. So today, Matt comes in um, and introduces, I mean, pre-K, kindergarten, second grade, and third grade, again, to pollinators, one particular pollinator, the bee, and does an art project with them. And every grade level, every student was super engaged and loved it. Um, and I got to join in, which is even better. <laughs> and he's painting a bee right here. So it'll make sure that our students understand that, you know, not only what happens in the classroom stays in the classroom, but now it's out in their play space and they'll see the different gardens that we're actually creating here so that they'll see the real connection between them. It doesn't matter who you are on the planet, doesn't matter how much money you have, what race, gender, any of that, you have a relationship that exists with honeybees. People happen by the mural and they're standing there together looking up at these bees that they all are feeling the same way about. They don't have to all have a tremendous passionate thing about the bees, but they can all go, yeah, I agree, we should save the bees. Bees should be healthy. We should be operating in a way that the bees get to be healthy too. If we do that, we've aligned with some agreement, some unwritten agreement between us all that is an energy that I think can change the world. So we start hearing about issues and start thinking about issues in a way that's not limited to what the reports say, to what the data says. Taking it down to a community level where everyday people can be inspired and can engage in a personal way is absolutely critical. Whether we're Muslim, whether we're Christian, whether we're Catholic, we can all have our own little pillars of faith. But at the end of the day, if we're all doing right, feeding people, helping each other, helping our communities, where would we be in 10 years? <laughs> so, like, there has not been one moment of alone on this job. I live with five other people. I am constantly around hundreds of children. And we just talked to a classroom that was obsessed with the stinging of wasps and hornets. They just think they should all die. And I was like, what am I doing here? I have this mini out of body experience. Like, why am I not just out there painting? Why am I trying to talk to children? Today, we totally nailed it. Got them excited about the bees, got them engaged with the story. I'm learning how to tell this to a third grader as we speak. And today, I feel like we got it. There's an ancient story that when the world was beginning, it blew up into a gajillion pieces. And basically, every human's job is to find their sense of purpose, connect it with one of those pieces, and then bring it back to the whole. It's not about fixing the whole thing. No one person has to fix the whole thing. No one person can fix the whole thing. It's our job to connect with that one little piece and bring it back to the collective. And if we all do that, well, it'll all be healed. You know, I really think it just might be possible that it's all happening so that humans can experience the beauty and amazement and awe 
and repairing.